Hi, and welcome to this module on Dictionaries in Q. This is our ninth module in the Fundamentals series, so please feel free to check out the previous modules if you haven't yet already. So, so far up to now, we've only dealt with atoms and lists. And after lists, the second basic type of data structure available in Q is the dictionary. And this is basically a key value association. So if we check out our contents here, we'll, we'll see we're going to learn a bit about dictionary decomposition um, and then how to create a dictionary, a bit around implicit typing and then column dictionaries. Then we'll be looking at how to do some lookups in our dictionaries, how to amend our dictionaries, and then how can we do operations like combining dictionaries together. Um, okay, so let's hide this and get started. So as I said, dictionaries are a key value data structure. Um, so they're basically an association between a list of keys and a list of values. Now it's actually stored physically as a pair of lists, um, but conceptually it can be considered a key value pair. Um, it's constructed from two lists of the same length and it, we use the bang operator and the bang operator is our exclamation mark. Um, so let's look at a simple example of how to create a dictionary here. So we're creating a dictionary here at D. We've got one list A, B on the left hand side, which is two symbols, and then one list on the right hand side, which is two long, so one and two. So if we just run show on this, we'll see this is what the dictionary looks like. So visually, you're able to tell it's a dictionary because it will, ha it will have a vertical line separating the key value pairs. So these are our keys on the left, these are our values on the right hand side. If you run type on a dictionary, you'll get 99H returned. Um, so if we checked out code.kx.com again, into our reference card and our data types, we'll see 99H um, is a dictionary. Um, we'll see in the next module that 98H is a table. Um, so we know we have a dictionary when we get 99 returned. We also know visually because of the vertical line. Um, we can run things like the keyword on dictionary and value word on dictionary. So key will return our keys, which is A and B, and value will return the values, which is one and two. And then you can do things like running count on the dictionary. Um, we can also run our primitive operations like plus, divide, multiply, and that's because dictionaries are a first order data type. So we can do things like add sim single atomic values to them. So you'll see here, we're able to add three, which increments one and two by three. So we're getting four and five. We're able to divide as well. We're able to multiply. Um, and you'll see when we have two values input here, it's doing pairwise vector multiplication. So it's multiplying the first one by one and the second one by two. So you see one remains and two is um, multiplied by two, which is four. When we pass in um, on the right-hand side here, a length that's greater than the length of the dictionary, we get an error. So we get a length error. So that's something very similar we've seen with lists um, as well, which makes sense because dictionaries are a pair of lists. Okay. So let's create some more dictionaries. So we've already said we use bang to do this and you just put that in between your list of keys and your list of values. So if we've got a list of names and a list of ages and we run bang on them, you'll see we get our dictionary created here. So we've seen that already. Um, and you note we can also have general lists as well. So we don't have to have just single um, values for our keys or our values. You'll see here we've got two symbols for our key here. And then on the second example, we've got two symbols in our dictionary values here. Okay. So we don't need to have just simple lists in here, but we do need to have them to be the same length. So for example, if you try to add um, a fourth value here, you're going to get a length error. Um, and the same goes for the keys. If we try to add a fourth key here. Okay, so have a go with this exercise. Create a dictionary called food where these three are your key and these three are your values. And once you're happy with that, let's move on and look at some implicit typing with dictionaries. So we can create an empty and untyped dictionary um, using empty key and value lists. So for example, if I have this here, we know um, empty round brackets is just an empty list. If we join two of them together with the bang operator in the middle and we run type on A, then type on the key of A and the value of A, you'll see we get 99H for the dictionary. And then when we look at the keys on their own, 
we get 0H and 0H. So these are obviously two empty lists and that's why we get 0H returned. Um, we could force the type on these lists by casting them here um, when we define the dictionary. So we're making this um, an empty list of symbols and then an empty list of floats here. And if we run this and run type on that again, we've got 99H for the dictionary, then we get our 11H for the key side, which is our symbols, and then 9H, which is our float um, data type for the values. Um, so doing it the second way would basically force conformity. Um, so any updates that happen to that dictionary, they must be of this certain type um, of each key and value. Okay, so in this example above as well, um, even though we're getting that it's untyped here, um, what actually happens when you do an update to that or do an insert, um, it will take the type of the first insert that happens to the dictionary. Um, so if you wanted a, an actual true general dictionary that's not going to lose its untyped nature, um, you could do something like this um, here. And you'll see we're using enlist here. So remember, um, we can use enlist to make a single atom a list. So we get a single item list. Um, so for example, if we had this, we know that's just a single um, atom. And if we do a list on, enlist on that, you can see we get this comma appended to the front, which means we've got a list of a symbol. So this comes into play with dictionaries. If we try to say we have a symbol ABC and we want to um, create a dictionary and map that to 10, that's not actually a dictionary because we're missing our um, vertical line. It doesn't look like a dictionary. So in order to make this be a dictionary, when we've got two single items, we can use enlist to do this. So we can run enlist on this and enlist on this here, here. And we just need to make sure we've got brackets around our symbol here. And now we've created a single item dictionary. Um, and that's by comparison to when we have, say, ABC and DEF. And we do 10, 20. Because we've got more than one item here, we don't need to enlist because it's already a list. Um, and then in this example here, we're um, saying we want the keys to be of type symbol. And then we're just making the values a generic null. So this here means even after you insert um, value to the dictionary, it's not going to assume any typing of the first inserted value. So that's just a little tip that can be useful to know and that can catch people out. Okay, it's so got another exercise now. So we want you to create a single element dictionary. So remember, we might need to use enlist to do that. Um, call it months with one key, January, and a value of one. And then once you're happy with that, we'll just have a quick look at column dictionaries. Um, so column dictionaries are the foundations for tables. So basically when we have a list of lists as our values, that's when we have a column dictionary. So if we run this, you'll see on the right-hand side, instead of having a single item inside our values, we've got um, many items here. These don't need to be the same length, it just happens to be that way. So these are actually the foundation for tables and we'll be looking at that in our next module um, on tables and table notation and structure in more detail. Um, okay, let's pause here for now and I'll see you in the next video.